Chapter 1. As with bonding between two metals or between two main group elements, ligands can multiply bond to a metal. The bond order is greater than one. Multiple bonds only apply for oxo or oxide and other group 16 ions known as chalcogenides. Alkoxide or alkoxo ligands such as phenoxide, the conjugate base of phenol, the N3- nitride, which is isoelectronic to oxide, imides with one alkyl or aryl group attached to the nitrogen and amides with two, carbenes and carbines with two substituents and one substituent respectively. Carbon monoxide, nitric oxide and halides are not considered ligands that can make multiple bonds. Although they have pi electrons to generate additional bonds, we nevertheless consider these ligands as singly bonded to a metal. For example, in the six coordinate complex, the oxo ligand creates a sigma interaction through overlap of a p orbital and a metal d orbital. This is the pz orbital where the mo bond is along the z axis, which is defined as the unique axis. In addition to the sigma bond, which all ligands have, the oxygen donor atom additional lone pairs that can form bonds with the metal. These lone pairs are in the px and py orbitals, which are orthogonal to the metal oxo bond and have a side on orientation to generate a pi interaction with the metal d orbital of matching symmetry. Since oxygen has three p orbitals, it can produce maximally one sigma and two pi bonds. Therefore, the maximum bond order for any ligand is three as they are all p block elements. The actual bond order depends on the structure of the ligand and the metal oxidation state from which we get a d electron count. If we consider metal ligand bonding in the context of hybridized orbitals, then a double bond is produced by an sp2 hybridized oxygen atom of an alkoxide. A triple bond will be produced if that oxygen atom is sp hybridized. Similarly, for an oxo ligand, a double bond for the sp2 hybridized atom and a triple bond for the sp hybridized oxygen atom. The nitrogen donor ligands are analogous, the amide, imide, and nitride. And multiple bonds can form with the carbanines, alkylidine, and alkylidine. Note that VSEPR theory still applies to the donor atom of each ligand as a main group element. SP2 hybridization gives a trigonal planar geometry. SP hybridization is linear. In this chapter, we will focus on the oxo, although the same process is applied to any of these ligands. Complexes with terminal oxo ligands are the most common such as the complex ions ferrate and permanganate. Here is the structure of vanadium oxychloride, a four coordinate complex with a vanadium oxo bond that is notably shorter than a typical metal oxygen bond of about two angstrom. Based on this experimental observation, we look at the valence tautomers shown here as resonance structures for the metal oxo unit. On the left is the two electron donor where a lone pair is donated from the oxygen atom to make a single bond with the metal. In the center is the four electron donor where another oxygen lone pair creates a second bond to the metal ion. The final tautomer is the creation of a triple bond by moving an oxygen lone pair into the mix. This tautomer is very similar to carbon monoxide where the triple bond makes the oxygen atom delta plus despite it being more electronegative. Consequently, the carbon atom is delta minus and as a ligand, CO binds through the lone pair of the carbon being the more basic site. So depending on the bond order, in the metal oxo unit, we can change the nature of the oxygen as nucleophilic on the left to electrophilic on the right. This variability of the oxo ligand means we can tune its reactivity depending on the metal ion to which it's coordinated. We use a molecular orbital diagram to describe the bonding in a metal oxo unit. A six coordinate complex with one oxo ligand has tetragonal geometry and C4V symmetry. Applying crystal field theory, the five degenerate d orbitals are split into doubly degenerate EG set, which are destabilized relative to the triply degenerate T2G set. The EG set comprise the dx squared minus y squared and d set squared orbitals, which point towards the ligands. The T2G set comprise the dxy dxz and dyz orbitals that project into the space between ligands. This is the octahedral crystal field. To this crystal field splitting, we apply ligand field theory, which takes into account the ligand types. 
For the oxo ligand, we add its three 2p atomic orbitals to the right side of the diagram. With the metal oxo bond defined as long as the z-axis, the pz orbital makes the mandatory sigma bond and the px and py orbitals overlap with the corresponding d orbitals to generate pi bonds. A sigma bonding and sigma antibonding molecular orbitals are added to the scheme being the most stabilized, the lowest in energy, and the most destabilized, the highest in energy in the MO scheme. A set of pi bonding and pi antibonding molecular orbitals result from the overlap of the px and py orbitals of oxygen with the dxz and dyz orbitals of the metal. So we have three oxygen atomic orbitals combining with three metal d orbitals to carry three bonding and three antibonding molecular orbitals. The two remaining d orbitals do not interact with the oxygen. The dx squared minus y squared is interacting with the equatorial ligands of our tetragonal complex. The dxy orbital is non-bonding. The final result is a partial MO scheme comprising eight atomic orbitals combining to give eight molecular orbitals. The symmetry of each orbital is shown in the character table of the C4V point group. In the quadratic column, we can find the d orbitals. The dz squared has A1 symmetry, and so the sigma and sigma star molecular orbitals also have A1 symmetry. dx squared minus y squared has B1 symmetry, dxy has B2 symmetry, and the dxz and dyz orbitals are doubly degenerate with E symmetry. Since they comprise pi molecular orbitals, these also have E symmetry. The most destabilized MO is the metal oxo sigma star, which is predominantly metal dz squared in character. The dx squared minus y squared is sigma antibonding with the equatorial ligands, hence there is no line connecting this to the oxygen p orbitals. The dxy orbital is non-bonding since it neither overlaps with the terminal oxo nor the other ligands in this complex. Electrons are added to the MO scheme in order to determine the bond order, which is the number of bonding electrons minus the number of antibonding electrons divided by two. We'll now use the first ever metal oxo complex as an example. This was created by taking a reactive red liquid, vanadium tetrachloride, and putting it into water where it produces a blue solution of the VO2 plus ion called vanadyl. The electron deficient vanadium-4 ion is Lewis acidic and when water coordinates the other water molecules can easily deprotonate this water leaving an oxygen atom as an oxide ion. In water the vanadyl ion includes five waters which make up a six coordinate tetragonal complex. We should point out that the suffix eel is the old name for complexes with oxo ligands such as vanadyl, chromial, and ferreal, along the same lines as we pronounce carbonyl. This nomenclature extended to actinides with two oxo ligands like uranyl, neptunyl, and plutonyl. Although the preferred name is oxometal, we still use the old version. This is the ball and stick depiction of the vanadyl ion in aqueous solution, which is a tetragonal complex with C4V symmetry on account that the oxo ligand is different to the five water ligands. To determine the bond order between the vanadium and the oxo, we draw our partial MO scheme for an oxo metal unit with C4V symmetry. The eight atomic orbitals from these two atoms combine to give eight molecular orbitals of which six are the bonding and antibonding orbitals of the oxo metal unit. To the left side, we add the number of d electrons from the metal ion, this being one for vanadium four. To the right side, we add six electrons as the number of 2p electrons in the oxide ion, which has a full outer shell as shown in the Lewis structure. Following the Aufbau, Pauli and Hund principles, these electrons are added to the scheme starting at the bottom. The highest occupied molecular orbital is dxy. It has one electron into it and so is called the SOMO. 
this gives a total spin ground state of s equals to one half for this complex ion. The bond order is six bonding electrons minus zero antibonding electrons divided by two, giving three. It is a triple bond between the vanadium and the oxo. We can see this electronic structure experimentally by looking at the UV vis spectrum. This is the original risk spectrum recorded in the 1960s, where one had to manually change the lamp from the visible wavelengths to the ultraviolet ones, and then stick the two parts of the spectrum together. The MO scheme is shown on the right, and we used to assign the bands in the spectrum, represented by the dashed lines uh, underneath, showing the peaks. The lowest energy band is at 13,000 wave numbers, corresponds to the smallest separation between the dxy ground state and the degenerate dxzyz orbitals. This is assigned as a doublet B2 to doublet E excitation, which is a ligand field or DD transition as confirmed by the intensity. With two spaces available in the spin-up electron, this band is twice as intense as the next transition, which is assigned as a doublet B2 to doublet B1 from the ground state up to the dx squared minus y squared orbital. And just to recap on term symbols, the ground state dxy orbital has B2 symmetry. So its term symbol is a capitalized B and the spin multiplicity, in this case two, is written as superscript in front of the B. This is the ground term. Spin multiplicity is given by the formula 2s plus one, where s equals to one half, with one unpaired electron in this orbital. The excited terms are those produced when the ground state electron transitions to a higher energy orbital, giving an excited state. The same methodology is applied, capitalize the letter designating the symmetry with the spin multiplicity as superscripted before it.